Hi guys, today we're gonna be talking about a technique we all know, but you will be surprised because most of us use this technique incorrectly. So I'm gonna show you examples and how exactly you should use it. I remind you that these videos on this channel is just light entertaining addition to one of the most serious audio production course. Hundreds of students graduated from this course during the last seven years. It's very crafted system is nine months in skype we even have homeworks when i check your projects in real time comparing to the best sounding mixes of all time and i show you how to make decisions i train your reactions ability to hear and you can actually attend one free trial class with current students to check exactly how it works how to contact me you can see this information on the screen by the way the whole income from this youtube channel i donate to help cats and dogs and this youtube channel was rated as a second best channel on the subject of audio production by feed spot in 2019. First of all, if you never heard about this technique for some reason, I'm gonna show you what's the main idea behind that. Usually the most suitable equalizers for this technique is modern digital EQs. So you put a point, uh, you boost by 20 decibels or so, you make it pretty narrow, and then you sweep from the lower frequency to the higher frequency, listening carefully at what frequency you hear the most awful kind of humming noises or depending on what you try to isolate, then you cut this frequency, uh, you, then you can try to make it a bit wider to affect a bit more on neighboring frequencies around chosen point and that's it. The real reason why we boost by 20 decibels, let's say, just because of to really make big difference between neighboring frequencies and frequency current frequency where your point at it shows you 140 hertz and you want frequencies like 120 or 160 to be much lower than 140 and that's why how you recognize that the problem is 140 exactly not 120 or 160 that's why we have to boost it a lot and we do it really narrow to affect on one specific frequency but let me show you why it's so wrong i wrote some small bit it sounds like this Right, and now I convert all these instruments to audio files. As you see, I don't use any loops, I prefer to write every note on my own. It's already premixed a bit. Now I'm gonna turn all my plugins off. We hear a lot of frequency conflicts in this mix, some instruments really not defined, so we start mixing it, for example, and most people consider it like this. Sometimes they try to use sweep technique like having a lot of points, so commonly I see equalizers like people pull the point. They say, oh my god, it's pretty humming over here, so they put it down in volume. And you continue... Like so ringing low frequencies, upper bass frequencies over here, and then you continue, you you continue doing something like that. People do it basically on all instruments. They don't like this point, they don't like this point. I'm just gonna speed up, I'm not gonna continue this because it's not correct anyway. So you cut all these frequencies, and I really seen many people have equalizers like this, like having like 20 points or 10 points. I cut all frequencies I really don't like on this kick. Let's listen to it in the mix. If this kick sounds improved, so this is without EQ. It sounds a bit quieter, so I compensate lost volume with the fader, or I can do it on the output of the equalizer, so without, with a bit lower fader. You know what? It's very subtle, some people may convince themselves, like they like it more. So for example, right now it's 140 and it sounds awful, right? You say, oh my god, I so don't like this sound, I really want to cut it. First of all, you should be honest with yourself, why it sounds so bad? It sounds so bad for many reasons. First of all, you boosted by 30 decibels, don't you think? So now I bypass this point and listen to, do you hear this awful sound now? kind of this sound. Do you hear it right now without this boost? No, you don't hear it. So you basically 
intentionally create this problem, and then you say, oh my god, I don't like how it sounds. But your original sample never sounded like that. If it was something like analog equalizer, when you boost the specific frequencies, you create more saturated tone around this frequency range. You can shift phase. In these digital equalizers, obviously you don't have any saturation emulation, but what you do, you create clipping. I have actually clipping plus 4 dB. So we exceed possible headroom. And you even hear this kind of a distorted, like, clickier kind of clipping, digital clipping. When you reach maximum headroom, right, 0 dBFS, basically, you have you have situation when you have waveform being cut. You have a waveform which is cut on its peak and it starts to be like a square waveform. And uh, it happens on your converter. So your digital analog converter, which sends your signal to monitors, right now modifies your tone to this awfully distorted tone. And that's why you don't like the sound as well. So basically this is the biggest mistake. In your original sound, you don't have this tone. You created this tone. It doesn't mean this technique is incorrect, but you should know where to use this technique. Just boosting all frequencies possible and just if you don't like it, you cut it, it's not the way to go. Mixers like Andy Wallace, Chris Rodell G, they use SSL consoles, and on SSL consoles you cannot allow yourself to have 20 points on the same EQ, like cutting 100 different points, right? Andy Wallace and Chris Rodelgy, guys who don't like to cut frequencies, they may use some cutting filter like Chris Rodelgy on the kick. That's it. But those audio engineers prefer to boost frequencies. Plus, if you listen to some amazing songs, let's say from AB Road production, let's say last album of Beatles, you may find songs like Let It Be, or they really sound good. If you compare them to modern mixes, modern mixes just usually sound a bit louder, but in terms of balance, tone, clarity in the mix, it's so it's so close. Sometimes you amaze how good it sounded in 60s, sometimes much better than modern production in some cases. What you can do on this equalizer, which was used to, mix, to record and mix Beatles' album, uh, you have just shell for highs, you have just one band, to cut frequencies, you cannot even make it narrower or wider, it's fixed Q factor on this bell filter, and you just have low shelf. Now you claim you want 20 points to cut all these frequencies, you know, so it's not cool, you should understand that mix it's about balance. So mixing is balancing, it's not just getting rid of frequencies you don't like. Mixing is balancing. You use this device to balance instruments with each other. Who's the most important in low mid? You may create new frequency conflicts by boosting the same frequencies which other instruments already have. If you really understand all these molecules of audio, which we learn on our course, you really learn what to listen to, why to do it. We never do anything by default. I never create rules like for you, something like you must do this and this. We really learn why we do it, in what cases we do it. We learn every possible equalizer to define their differences, even all plugins sound different, even based on the same model. So I show you all these little differences and check how you implement all knowledge you get from the course in your real projects. And this is how you see your progress and you will not spend like 10 years uh, until you really start to feel all this stuff. You spend just nine months. I asked myself in the very beginning, seven years ago when I created this course, how to teach people in a way like after nine months they feel themselves like guru of audio, where they really understand what to do in every case, they feel themselves confident and they don't need to really listen to somebody where some people really force them to do something. People will understand the situations by themselves and they really feel what this mix requires, you know, instead of like some virtual guru of audio will tell you, no, I tell you, you should do this, this and this. Instead, people say, okay, I know what I should do because I know how to notice the problem, all possible techniques and, and ideas how to fix it. And eventually people start to be really real professionals. So this course is about real audio engineering. So the biggest secret of sweep technique, you should know you, that you hear some problem. And only then, when you hear this problem, you say to yourself, how I can find particular frequency, specific frequency, where this problem happens. So first of all, you should realize the problem. Find out at what frequency it is. Third, third, cut the frequency. And how people incorrectly use this technique. They just listen to, let's say, the same kick. 
it may sound more or less fine or something like that, or they just really cannot say, oh my god, my kick is boxy, or oh my god, my kick is boomy, or oh my god, my kick doesn't have enough definition in upper mid-range, doesn't have enough high punch, or my kick doesn't have enough low punch, or my kick has too much sub-frequencies, or my kick should be tighter, or my kick should be, like, cutting through, or my kick too thin, or my kick too, too fat, you know. People just simply don't realize any issue with their kick but they already start applying sweep technique they already start with the step number two so they try to find out at what frequency the problem is not even understanding what problem is and what they try to find they don't know you know it's just it's, it's just like a blind mixing you know so let me show you an example layered synthesizer which sounds like this so when i listen to it in a mix It has two solid mid frequencies, you know, something like we call it boxiness. When other instruments more like mm, like liquid, smoother, they like ah, uh, this one like uh, you know, like uh, so it's more like it's too much mid frequencies on this synthesizer. It has too much kind of density in something like mid mid range around like 500 or 600. I know in advance what I'm looking for. Boxiness means what? You have like cardboard box. You put something in this cardboard box like a source of a sound, let's say cell phone with music, you close this cardboard box and you listen to this music outside of the box. Or put your head inside of the huge cardboard box and try to say something and you will realize how it's resonating at specific frequencies. It's like pam pam, you know, like too, too strong, too firm mid frequencies. I want to get rid of this. So what I do, I solo this synthesizer. After proper education or after a lot of years of experience, my experience, you can see from the first second of this video, uh, it explains my path in audio engineering. So I know in advance that the problem is placed somewhere around like 400, 500, 600, 700 hertz. So I try to hear the same issue right now, but it should be really exaggerated right now. It, it starts to be closer. Hear this kind of resonance, right? So it's like... Now I already passed that region, now it sounds more open. Curve of equalizer still touching frequencies below and above the point. So anyway, you have those frequencies exaggerated, but that like peak where it was so noticeable, I already passed that moment. So I go back... how much I cut and how wide I cut. And actually I do it in the mix mostly, because again, I, I don't care how this instrument sounds in solo, I only care if it sounds right in the mix. When I cut this frequency, obviously I lose a level of this instrument, so I compensate lost level on the output of equalizer. Now let's compare before and after. So this is synthesizer without this equalizer. It has this kind of a poo poo, you know, it's like you're saying, instead of like, one, two, one, two, you sounded like one, two, one, two, one. You know, like resonance of your palms over here to the microphone. So it has like, I mean, it's not like super awful synthesizer. It's pretty fine even on its own without this EQ. But anyway, hearing boxiness from this synthesizer, it may give you some illusion like you have the same boxiness in drums, in vocal, which you record later or something like that. So basically, it's like boom, boom. You know, so like too much of this kind of a uh, sound. So you put the cue. And it starts to sound like more like ah, uh, instead of uh, you know, before it was like uh, and now it's like ah, uh, you know, more like open, more clear, like more, more liquid, more smooth sounding. So, as you can see, I knew originally what kind of issue with this instrument, then I applied this technique, and only that's why it works fine. You should understand, even if instrument itself sounds better with your 20 points EQ in, it's still not a balanced mix. You know what? Balanced mix doesn't mean just like better sound in individual instruments. Balanced mix, it means each instrument takes its own place. Each instrument gives enough space for other instruments, but... Uh, has something important in its own frequency range. Instruments overlap with each other, they have frequency conflicts, and you really should resolve those things, you should balance, this instrument should be a bit more here, but less here, but the second instrument takes that place, you know, so you create different, like, 
different positions of different instruments. That's why just cutting frequencies you don't like doesn't work. So as I said, you really should have very good trained ear. We call it audio engineering reactions. When you really hear all these little molecules of audio, where you really can say not only what's wrong, but how your movement affects on other instruments. Every movement with your equalizer can improve your individual instrument, but can spoil other instruments which sound on the background. You still insist on this technique where you create many points. So you cut, 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 like this, right? And let's say you cut, for example, over here, a lot of different frequencies. Your instrument at the same time sounds too quiet because you lost some energy, because you lost energy in mid frequencies. So you boost output volume on this instrument, so you increase overall volume of this instrument to compensate lost volume, and you automatically make lows and highs louder right now. If before you had pretty normal level of lows, let's say, on this synthesizer, and it didn't create too much, like, frequency conflicts with the bass and kick by boosting overall level and eventually low frequencies level, you create new frequency conflict between the synthesizer and, let's say, bass. You also boosted volume of highs of the synthesizer by compensating volume of this instrument, and now more volume in upper, mid-range, and highs, and if some instruments before, let's say, vocal or cymbals, they relatively was clear, because this synthesizer didn't argue with them for high frequencies, but now, by boosting level of the synthesizer, you make new frequency conflicts in higher ranges, in upper, mid-range, in highs, your vocal can be not as open as it was before, so as you understand, it's all about balance, it's not just, like, finding individual frequencies and kill it. You know what? Uh, I've been working with audio like for 20 years. It's my occupation, right? In my life I had only one occupation, audio engineer. It takes a lot of years to really realize and understand all these little parts. If you really want to save a lot of time, you know, not going through all this painful process, you can attend this course. It's all about results because we really compare your projects to the best sound in mixes of all time. So it's not like totally subjective, you know? It's really like comparisons your product versus the best product. People who graduated from this course, they say it's a game changer or life changer. They really saved a lot of time. On this course, we don't have like bullshit, you know. We have only things what you really can use in your practicing. We have topics related to everything. Microphones, preamps, 80% uh, of this course, mixing and mastering. We have sound design, we have music writing, we have arrangement, vocal tuning, recording techniques, and all that stuff. You go out from this course like a guru of audio relatively affordable because for the same amount of money you can buy like one pair of regular monitors or one average microphone but or three four plugins but those things don't guarantee results my course guarantees it and you pay monthly so it's easy make payments in this course next video will be in two weeks so subscribe don't forget to hit bell notification information how to contact me you can see on the screen don't hesitate to attend free trial class with current students to check exactly how this course looks like. See you later and have a good mixes.